Today we're looking at Microsoft Word so that you can create a structured thesis. What we want to do, our main objectives, we'll start by adding sections and styles in the document. That builds the structure. We'll look at heading numbering. And that's very simply um, locking it into a, a set of styles. It just makes it a little bit more reliable that way. We'll look at an automatic table of contents, how that can work for you. Adding captions and cross-referencing within the text and to any objects that you might have in there. And then last of all, we'll consolidate. So those are the main things we want to cover today. If you go to the library homepage on library services and into training, that's where we've got those resources and software training resources. We'll list them all. And from in there, I want to use the creating a structured thesis exercise file. So because that's a zip file, one click allows me to extract and I can extract those files. And those are the ones that we'll probably make use of for today. Now there's one other reference point I want to show you, if I just minimize this for now. On that resources page, not only do we have exercises, but we also have training manuals. Then there's a little training manual there for creating a structured thesis. But if you click on there, it just gives you a little PDF and that's everything that we'll look at today. And then there's probably some a little bit more in there as well as we go through. All right, so I'm gonna go back to those exercises in my file explorer. And I'm gonna start with my thesis preliminary pages. So if you can see that now, can I get you to go to that file? Now you can have a look through this document if you like. If you go through the document, you'll see all those sections. Now all those sections must stay. And that's where some people were getting their thesis returned because, oh, I don't have any publications. I'll just take that section out. We can't do that. We need to have those headings in there. So um, just a few options there. Now, if you go to the end of this document, you'll see that there's other things there, dedications, your table of contents, your list of figures. The main text of your thesis here is only one line. But what I would like to do is just tidy this up a little bit. So I am gonna select all of these bullet points. I don't want bullets on there. So I'm gonna tidy them up just on that home tab. Just remove the bullets. And you'll notice that they are a little bit indented as well. So I'm gonna strip that back. I'm just gonna take them back to the margin. Now, what I want to do here is rather than work through my whole document as one whole document, I need to add some section breaks. And if you've been using these, that's fine. So I can have A4 pages all the way through my document and then realize I need a table of research data in there. Well, I can't do that with just a normal page break. So the section break adds structure. So it allows you to add structure in there. What I want to do is separate the main text of my thesis from the, the preliminary or the introductory information and from the bibliography and appendices. So at that line there, can you go to that line now? Then click on layout, go to breaks, click on next page section break and you'll see that I'm on the next page. But how do I know that's a section break and not page break? Well, if I want to check that, if I go to the home tab on the ribbon, there's a little button there which will give you non-printing characters. This is really nice for editing. If I click on it, it should show, yep, there we go, my non-printing characters. And what you should see from the page above is that this is no longer just a page break. It's a section break onto the next page. You might need to, I just pressed enter there so that it was on its own line. All right, now that's all good. Now, the problem you've got here is you don't know what section you're in. Is it six and seven? Is it 10 and 11? You just don't know. So can you go down to the gray bar at the bottom, right click on there, and this will give you your status bar options. All of these things can be switched on so you can view them from here to see where you are in your document. Now all I want to do is switch on section. So if you click on section, and if you have a look now, bottom left hand corner, it tells you the section you're in. So it's a really nice status locator. All right, if you don't want it, click in the document and it's actually gone. All good? Now, I would like you to do another section break, this time at the bibliography, because I would like my main thesis to be in a section of its own. The cursor goes before bibliography on the layout tab, breaks, next page section break. And you'll see that you've now moved into another section for the bibliography. Now that we've got the section breaks in there, I actually do want to add page numbering here. activate this section at the bottom. I want to do the footer. There's a couple of different ways you can do it, but if I right click down here, I can now edit the footer. So if you click on there, you can edit footer and it tells you two things. 
It will tell me at the left hand side here, the section I'm in, I'm in section three, but it also gives you something else here and it says same as previous, a default setting. So if I want that the same as the previous section, it doesn't matter what I put in here, they will mirror each other. It'll be the same throughout the document. But you can move to the previous section and see what you're gonna get. Have a look at the ribbon now, and what you should see is you've now got a header and footer design tab. So this will move you quickly and easily to the next or the previous section. So let's go to the previous section, and it says section two is also same as previous. Well, let's see if we want that. If we go to previous again, I'm in section one. Now there is no previous, so section one here is my cover page. Hmm. So if I go into all my um, preliminary information, do I want it the same? No. I don't want a number on page one. So if I move to the next section, how do I make this different? Then I choose to break the link here that makes it same as previous. They're linked and they're linked with this little button here. So in section two, if I now say, or click on that button, link to previous, it means that this will be independent, an independent footer from section one. Go to the next section and what does that tell me? Oh, that's gonna be the main text of my thesis. So I could leave that, but I want that to be different again. So what I'm gonna do is break that link as well. Go to the previous section. In section two, I want to add Roman numerals as page numbers. So first thing I'll do is add page numbers. Can you go to page number, please? Can you do page number at the bottom of the page? And I'll take plain number two. And I only do that because it's centered and it keeps it easy for odd or even or left or right margins. So I'll go for plain number two. Now it says nine, it's actually at the end of the section, so that's okay. But I don't want Arabic numbers there. I want them to be Roman numerals. So if you now go back to page number, can you go to format page number this time? And can you from there indicate that you want Roman numerals? So the upper or lower case, they are there. Confirm by clicking on okay. And what you'll see this time is that it starts page numbering at the start of section two, which is just immediately after the title page, but it starts on number two. Don't want that. So I can change that. And for this section, I'm gonna go back to page number again. And I'm gonna to go to format page number. And at the bottom, you'll notice that it says, continue from previous section or start at a certain number. Well, if you click on start at, it should jump to Roman numeral one. And then if I say, okay, that now starts at one. Now you can't really see that. So let me switch off those symbols. Now those little non-printing characters we just had, the press, when you press enter, when you press tab, when you press space, they're on the home tab and you can toggle them on and off. You can also use your keyboard. So if you wanna use the keyboard to switch them on and off, then you can do control and shift with the asterisk on the keyboard. Let's just close that down then. And I'm gonna do a quick file, quick save. And I've saved my thesis preliminary pages now with the structure on there because we've got section breaks and the page numbering as well. So I'm just going to close that one down. If you do file and close, and then it should leave Word open for you. All right, let's have a look at going back to that little yellow file explorer, the little yellow folder. And in here this time, could I get you to open the unformatted thesis, please? Double click on it you've got a navigation pane here that can also work for you here. So we've got nothing to navigate with at the moment. So if we go to pages in that navigation pane, you'll see that we can go and work with little thumbnails. My first chapter deals with Microsoft Word. My second chapter deals with Star Office Writer. Can you go to that point in the document? And what I'd like you to do is put a section break in there. So sit before the line, before the text, Go to um, layout, breaks, and a next page section break. So we've got two sections in here for two chapters. Next thing I want to do is add some page numbering. So if you double click at the bottom of the page as well, that will also activate the footer space. So we're gonna do the same as we did before. We'll do page number, bottom of the page, plain number two. What I'd like to do is format these page numbers and I want them to start at one as well. And also, that's all, that's all perfectly good. 
um, continuing from the previous section is what we need to have in there. Confirm by clicking on OK. And then you should see that that will be continuous throughout. Sorry, I didn't go to the next section there. Section two will be the same as previous. So the, the numbering will be continuous. Close the header footer. I want to go back to the document. Either the last button on the ribbon or double click in the text. And what I want to do is just a save as now. So can you go to file? Can you do save as? And I'm just going to change this to formatted thesis. Can you move to the beginning of the document? If you want to do it from the keyboard, control and home will move you to the very beginning of a document. And I'd just like you to have a look at Microsoft Word. Now, the next thing I want to do is look at styles. And you may be using or familiar with some styles at the moment. I'll just explain the benefits of using those. There's two types of formatting to any word text, and it's direct formatting or indirect. So your direct formatting is where you select the text and you apply the changes to it from the ribbon. So in this case, we've applied the color red. You might change the font, you might change the size, but that's only for the selected information. If you're doing a complex document and you might have seven, eight chapters, you might have headings and subheadings. When you go for academic review and then the academic says, well, your font's not quite right or I don't like the color or something's not working, then you have to go ahead and change 50 or maybe even 60 headings. If you've used styles and you've applied a style, however, you've got that applied to 50 or 60 headings. All you need to do is change the settings of the style and it will automatically filter through the document. Styles are applied automatically by default. So even at that Microsoft Word level, you'll see that I do have a style applied. Up on this Quick Styles Gallery, there's a little outline here. And that tells me the style that's there. But the style I've got, the text I've got doesn't look the same as this. I've applied character or font changes on top of the style. Now you can only have one paragraph style, but you can apply a character style on top of that. So let's have a look at Microsoft Word. I want to change that. If this is a chapter heading, it should be a heading one. So if I now go up to my Quick Styles Gallery, if I hover over there to apply that style, I don't just hover, I do one click. So I've just applied heading one. Underneath, I can go in here and I can see this is going to be a heading two. One click in the text, one click in the gallery. So I now have a heading two applied. And if you've got non-printing characters, you'll see these little markers appear with styled paragraphs. They get this little square that tells it it's a heading. There's a heading being applied here. So the next one down is level three. So I go to how do I recover and click on three. Now something interesting also happens on your ribbon. You'll notice when you've got one, two and three applied, heading four becomes available. There are nine styles in every set. But it doesn't show you all nine. As you start to use them, then you see the next one or the subsequent one down. So let's go through the document looking for red text. Word closed unexpectedly. That's a heading three. That's a question. And then I think that might be us before we come across. Oh, no, one more. Why can't I open a Word document on page four? That's a heading three. And then we've got the new chapter. So with the new chapter, Star Office Writer versus Word is a new chapter heading, it should be a heading one. Select the next one that I want, which is writer saves a document, and that's a heading two, so one click on that. And then if you go underneath, Word cannot open writer documents. If I wanna repeat the last thing that I did, you can do control and Y, or you can also press function key F4. F4 is the repeat key in Word. One click and F4. If you are working with a complex document for thesis submission, there are certain formatting limitations that you have to work with. Um, if you're doing a master's degree, it's a little bit different. You actually get a little bit um, more freedom on your formats. But if you're doing the PhD, you've got two choices. Times New Roman, size 12, one and a half line spacing, or Arial, size 12, one and a half line spacing. So let's have a look at what we've got. We don't have that here. So what I want to do is make sure that I do. Now I'm not selecting anything, but I am gonna modify a style that will have an impact throughout the whole document. So we're gonna start with the main body of our text. The main text that we've got here is normal. Go up to the ribbon and right click with the mouse. And there, I wanna modify the style setting. It opens up this little dialog box. Now I'm not interested in too much at the top here. That's all predefined. But what I do want to do is look at character formats, font, size, effect, and color. 
are in that top row. Underneath that, I've got paragraph formats, alignment, line spacing, paragraph spacing, and indents. What we need is Times New Roman size 12. So I'm gonna start with that now. I'll just look for Times New Roman in my font. There we go. I'll make it size 12. Now I can adjust my line spacing by using these buttons here, but I'm gonna show you another way of doing it. Go down to format, bottom left-hand corner. I can format my paragraph settings. So I click on paragraph. And this is where it opens up a little dialog box for you. So I can do general settings for the paragraph, indentation and spacing. So what I want to do is look at the right hand side of spacing. It's got multiple at the moment, I don't want. I would like one and a half lines. And then confirm by clicking on OK. And then confirm by clicking on OK again. And my document has now just expanded out because all of the text has become one and a half line spacing. Now I didn't select the whole document to do that because we'd just gone through and applied the heading style, if I can find one, to all of these headings. So if I had selected the whole document and said, make it normal Times New Roman 12, all of my headings would have changed as well and I don't want that. So all I did was went in and changed the style and only the text that had the style applied has changed. Now we need to do it again for those heading styles because those heading styles are with Cambria. Go to the beginning of the document and click into Microsoft Word. And from here, I want you to right click heading one and click on modify. Now you'll notice it has done a couple of things. It's gone to one and a half line spacing. Because it's based on normal, it picks up a few of the normal formats, the paragraph formats. So what I'd like to do is change the character. So I want that to be Times New Roman, 16 is good, but I want to change the color to automatic and then confirm by clicking on OK. And if you really want to check, you'll see from here, if I now go to page seven, Star Office Writer has also changed. It's no longer blue. Automatically adopted those settings. Let's go to the next option, which is our heading two text. Right click up in the gallery to modify. Change that to Times New Roman. I'm going to make that size 14, Times New Roman 14 and automatic. And then OK. And then the last one there is heading 3, right click, modify. Now this one I would like to be Times New Roman 13 because 12 is the size of my main text. It's not on there. If you just type in 13 and press enter, it will adopt that sizing. And then I'll just change that color to automatic and confirm by saying okay. So we've kind of tidied that up. Now I can see for, I haven't used it, I may use it later. You may want to um, modify that in the same way and I'm just gonna change that to um, a different color and I might do that font as well. All good. So you can work through those. Now the styles that we've applied, they're more beneficial. They allow you to do a little bit more here as well. With the navigation pane, we're looking at pages. Can you now go to headings, please? And if you click on headings, you'll be able to see there. Every piece of information that we added a style to has now become available as a heading and you can navigate. So you just click on the heading that you want and it will take you directly there. So you can go wherever you want within that document itself. Can I get you to do a quick save, please? Just do a quick save on that document. The preliminary pages that we looked at a moment ago didn't have any styles applied to them other than normal. But we had those little headings, the abstract and the declaration of authorship and the publications and whatnot. They were all kind of bold and underlined. So we might want to use that as a style. I'm not gonna do it in that document. I'm just gonna do it here because I might use it again and again. So what I'd like you to do now, go to Microsoft Word, just at the beginning of the document's good. And then can you open up the uh, styles gallery? Now I want a new style. We don't recommend this very often. We would say always use the built-in styles and always use them in order. So make sure that you're using headings one, two, and three. Don't do headings one, four, and six. It will have an impact on numbering. So always do one, two, and three. And if you don't like the look of them, modify them so that they suit what you're looking for. But if I want a new style, expand the gallery here, the styles, the quick styles gallery, with that little button in the bottom corner. And if you click on it, it will open up a styles pane. Now by default, they kind of float around and I would like to dock mine. Can you double click up where it says styles? If you just double click on it, oops, 
it should dock it in at the right hand side. All those styles look exactly the same and they're not, they all will be different. So if I wanna see what they're gonna look like, there's a little show preview button at the bottom here. So if I just click on show preview, it lets me see what they'll be like and then I can get a better idea of whether I'm gonna apply one or not. We want to use the buttons at the bottom here. I would like a new style. Can you go to the very first button there for a new style? And this is where we are interested in the information at the top. So where am I gonna use this? Well, I'm gonna use this in my preliminary pages. I'm gonna use it for the little titles that I have in my prelim, but I'm gonna use it for my thesis titles, everything in that introductory or the preliminary pages. It will be a paragraph style, which means it will have character formatting and it will have paragraph formatting combined. But then underneath it says, it will be based on heading one. Now it's done that because I got you to come in from Microsoft Word. Heading one was applied to that style. That's why it's using that as a background or a base. I would like to change that. I don't want it to be based on heading one. I'm gonna make this normal. Can you make it based on normal? Now underneath that, it says style for following paragraph. So when I've done my heading and I press enter, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get my thesis title still, and I don't want that. I would like it to go back to normal text. So I can do my heading, or do my title, press enter, and then start writing or start typing. So I'm gonna change style for following paragraph to normal as well. All good. So what I want to do, I'm gonna keep it uh, Times New Roman size 12, but I might apply bold and underline. Click on okay. Now it does a couple of things here. So if I've made my new style, what has it done? It's changed the text that I was in. So that's now got it applied. It's added it into my styles gallery from here. I can now see thesis title. And it's also added it to the quick styles gallery as well. So there's a few ways of using or making use of it. Now, the first problem we need to resolve is Microsoft Word it should be a chapter heading. It should be heading one. It can only have one paragraph style at a time. So I'm gonna click on heading one to reapply heading one to Microsoft Word. Now I've got chapter one and two. I've got chapter three somewhere else, but I've yet to start chapter four. I don't want to have to start the document all over again, the settings all over again for chapter four. And I don't wanna to have to delete all this and try and keep little bits of it. What I'd like to do is take those styles that we've just worked on and have them as my own set so that I can apply them to new blank documents when I need to use them or even documents with content. So what I'd like to do now is make sure that I can save this as a style set that I can use it again and again. Can you go to the design tab please? And from the design tab, if you expand that out, I'm not gonna get you to change anything at the moment. You can see the styles that we've got in place here and the built-in styles that we can use. Now I wanna keep mine so I can use it again. So I'm gonna save it as a new style set. So all I need to do now is go to the option that says save as a new style set. The thing that I'm gonna tell you here and it's key, do not change where it goes. So I'm gonna call this my thesis styles. I've got thesis titles, which is a style in the document, but thesis styles, I'm gonna click on save. And I've just saved those styles for my own use. Can you now go back to that design gallery? So these are all the style sets that you can use. And what you should now see is a custom set. And if you look under custom, when you hover your mouse over it, you'll see what you've just called it. That was thesis styles. The reason I didn't get you to move it is that if we had moved it somewhere else, it would not show up in that little gallery. I can now go ahead and try any one of these other style sets. It will only change where you've got heading styles applied. If I want to apply a different style set, I can click on it. Still the same information, but it just looks different because the style set has changed or the settings for that style. But if I want to get back to what we were working with, then I can go back up to custom, there's my thesis styles, and I click on it, and that takes me back to what we were starting. But I'd like you to go to Microsoft Word. The next thing for us is looking at uh, numbering. So I'm gonna do the simplest numbering scheme. So one, 1 1.1, we want multi-level numbering, but I would like you to go to the little down arrow. If I was to choose switch on, this is what I'm gonna get as my default. One, A, I, 
one AI. So it's not a brilliant numbering scheme. It's not going to work brilliantly. So I can actually see a little bit of what I'm looking for here. I can see one, 1 1.1, 1 1.1.1, and that's there. But you have to be careful. Little alarm bell should be ringing here. The problem with this line or this preview is that it numbers everything. It numbers absolutely everything in your document. And as you go through and get things numbered as well, how do I get that sub-level? How do I get 1.1? I've got an indent or I've got a tab. And if you go underneath, do you see you've got the same numbering scheme? But this time it locks it to the heading style. So whenever it comes across a heading one, it will give you a whole number. And then when it comes across a heading two, based on the um, heading one above, it will give you 1.1 or 2.1 or 3.1 depending on what that chapter is. So it's kind of automatic numbering, if you like. So from here, that's the numbering scheme we want. So if you click on that now, it does apply it, but is it correct? There's a little bit of a problem with it, and it's set up deliberately only because you might come across this in your own document. This is an empty paragraph, but someone has applied the numbering sorry, not the numbering, the heading style, heading one there. So it gives me a number. And you may find that there's, there's little paragraphs that are numbered throughout your document. They've got no information. The empty paragraph can be solved in one or two ways. Either I don't need it and I just delete it, but there is a numbering style that doesn't get numbered. Normal. So if I want to have the space for the pagination, then all I need to do is convert that to normal. If I want the normal style, can you do control and shift together with the letter N and it will apply the normal style. So control, shift and N will take you to normal and then you'll notice your numbering has automatically updated. Now if you don't want that space, and we probably don't, it's an extra paragraph or an extra line, you can delete it and it will remove it. But just as long as you're aware Anything that you've got with the normal style, if you've used that numbering scheme, does not get numbered. We do have another change that I want to make. I don't want to just have the number one floating around there. I want it to say chapter. When I click there, it does go great. You will never get in front of that number to change it. Let's go and change that number so that it does say chapter, whatever. But if you go back to multi-level numbering, please, click the down arrow there. And what I'd like you to do is go to the bottom where it says, define a new multi-level list. So all we're doing is a bit of a modification here. What I'd like you to do is go underneath. There's a little field which says enter formatting for this number. Now all I want to do is move in there and go in front of the number. Now anything you type is like a stamp. So I'm going to put in there chapter. Now if you've accepted that click on OK and that's all good. I'm just going to show you um, as an example some of the problems that you might come up against. It doesn't happen too often. Do you know the number that I showed you? It's got a little grey background to it. It means it's a field code. It will automatically update for chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, whatever it sees ahead in one. Very often people will make the mistake of taking it out and panicking and then thinking, oh, I'll just put chapter one back in there. So that's perfect. <laughs> but I haven't got a grey background to it. Remember, everything you type is like a stamp. So everything I get now is chapter one. There's an easy solution. I take that back out. All you've done by removing the number here is removed, if you look in the field underneath, the number style. So all I have to do is go there and say, I want this to be a one, two, three, or whatever. The only other thing you need to consider is that we've just added these numbers to the styles. They're not in our style set. So when I go to use that thesis styles for another chapter, there's no numbering on there. So what I'd like you to do is add that in now. So if you go back to design, expand the gallery and save as a new style set. That's the only option you have and that's what we're gonna do. And I can create a new one, but I don't want to have multiple things with different settings. So I'm just gonna click on the one we've got, thesis styles. And then if I click on save, it should prompt you. And it says, oh, hold on, you've already got thesis styles there. Do you wanna overwrite it? Yes, I do, click on yes. And we're good to go. And if you check your gallery, you can just see it in the preview you can see it's got a little bit of a number there. So you'll see chapter one, heading one. I would like to now consolidate the documents. I want to pull this, my chapter one and chapter two, into my preliminary pages. Once you've saved that, if you want to close it down, 
we'll open up our preliminary pages. And then from there, what I'd like you to do is move to the end of the document. Control and end will take us down there. And I want to get to the main thesis of our text. Now, I'm going to switch on non-printing characters. What I'd like to do is remove that main text of the thesis. I just want to select it and press enter. I want to insert my chapter into this file as an object. So can you now go to the insert tab? Now there's an object there, but I don't want the object. If you can click on the down arrow alongside object, it gives you two choices, either an object or text from a file. I just want to take chapter one and two and pull them in. So if we go to text from file, and I want to work with my formatted thesis this time. And when I go to that formatted thesis, if I click on insert, there's my chapters. But something peculiar has just happened. We've spent all morning with Times New Roman styles. They've gone to Arial because that's what the thesis preliminary pages are. So when I insert into this file, it will automatically adopt that formatting. I would like to have the, time, the Times New Roman that we've just spent creating this morning. So can you now go to design and you open up the gallery and in custom, you'll see your thesis styles. Can you click on it? And that will now apply it throughout that document. I'm going to do file, save as, and can you save this as your thesis preliminary pages? I'm just going to put draft on the end of it. Now, what I did want to show you before in the other document, it's all about moving your information around. So if I am working with styles and headings, I might have information here that I need to change. Let's just say that first question, I don't want to see the whole question. I only want to see the, the title or the heading of it. When you've applied your heading styles, do you see we've got this little triangle at the left? If you go in here and I don't want to see the whole question, if I click on the triangle, it will collapse that information. And I can do the same under any of the heading styles that I've applied. So I can collapse the information from view. So I get to see more of a structure. Be very wary of it. This is in print layout. So it's a true representation of your document. Yeah. When you go to print it out, that's exactly what you're going to get. Now, you can just open them all out again. If you go up here and if you just right click, you should see on the menu option, there's an expand and collapse option. So you can expand headings or you can collapse or you can expand all headings. So I'll do that one. And it means that everything's now opened up again. Now, there's another thing that I want to do. I said just a moment ago about moving things around. I want to see them in different positions. Well, I can actually use this navigation pane for that. So the same thing as before, it would normally be a copy and a paste or a cut and paste. If I said, however, I want question 1.1.2, that should be my first question. If I just click and drag here and move it up, when I release, I've just swapped them around. It's very clever. Um, you have to be a little bit cautious, however. We've separated our chapters with section breaks, yes? Look at what might happen. At the end of 1.1.3, there's a section break. So if I decide here to move that up, it renumbers perfectly well, but the section break goes with it. So rather than separate chapter one from chapter two, I've separated question 1.1.1 from question 1.1.2. This The section break between chapters is gone. So just be wary of that. As long as you're aware of it, you could probably remove that and then add it back in again at the end. As long as you're aware that's what it's going to do, then you should be fine. Let me undo. And just I just want to check that's back in there separating the chapters. That's all good. All good. So it's a really nice technique. And what it's doing is picking up your heading styles. So it's saying I'll take everything from here to the next heading style that's higher or the same. Or what we have done is applied our own styles here. Yes, we've now got thesis styles with Times New Roman. But I haven't got any style applied to the thesis title. So in there, the abstract is normal. So I'm going to change it. I want it to be a thesis title. And then I'll come back down. I'll do my declaration. That'll be a thesis title. I'm not going to do all of them. I just want to let you see some of the differences. So I've got publications. So all we'll do is apply a thesis title to that. All good?
All right, so we've got some styles applied in there. Now, what I want to do is get down to page nine. There we go. So the remainder of the thesis should be in the following order. I do not need that text. So I'm going to select and remove that line. And then I'd like to apply the thesis title style to the remaining headings there. Let's go to the end of the table of contents. That's what I want to work with now. From here, if you want to generate a table of contents and you've used the styles as recommended, then all you need to do is go to references on the ribbon and table of contents is there. Now, there is an option here of using predefined or built-in tables. I tend not to work with them um, for complex documents in this way. They put a placeholder in there and they're perfectly good because they're predefined, they're harder to manipulate. I would rather and set my own custom table. So at the bottom, do a custom table of contents. Now this gives you a preview. It lets you see page numbers and right aligning those numbers if you want them or not. We're only gonna use three levels here. Now that's headings. What heading levels do you want? I'm gonna go with all the defaults. So then confirm by clicking on okay. And I now have a table of contents couple of issues with it. I don't have any of that preliminary information that I started with. My page numbering is not correct because it's it started 10 here. There may be other things in here. Just bear in mind, if you see an error in here, don't actually edit it here because this is a reflection of the document. So the error is in the document. So if there is anything that needs changing, then it should be in the document somewhere. Now, what I want to do is fix up this table of contents. So if you go to um, the section that you want to change, it's actually useful for navigating as well. So if I click on it, do you see you get this gray background? It's a little code that can be updated as your document changes. So I would like to go now, and if you want to um, follow any of those options as a link, hold down control on the keyboard and click the left mouse button. And that takes you straight there. But what I want to do is look at my page number at the bottom here. So if you can go to the page numbers that are there, double click and that will activate the page numbers for Microsoft Word. Now this is page one of chapter one. So you really do want that to start at one. Now if you go to page number, it will allow you to do some formatting. Format the page number and just indicate that you want this to start at one. And then OK. And you should see that now we've got page Microsoft Word as page one of chapter one starts at one. Now there's a very simple reason that we didn't do this right at the start. Do you remember when we were doing sections and styles and page numbering at the beginning? We made sure it said continue from previous because when we add subsequent uh, sections, they will mimic those settings. If we had said at the start here, start at one and then put our section breaks in, that would follow through for every section break. It would, every section would start at one, which you don't want. Ideally, you want them to continue. But now that that's been updated, let's go up and have a look at your table of contents. Close down the header and footer on the ribbon, and let's have a look at the table of contents there. So what I want to do here is make sure that I can update this table of contents. Now it's a code. If I right click on it, you'll see that it says update field. It's a field code. So click on update field and you get a little prompt and it says, do you want me to leave things where they are but just update the page numbers or do you want me to do the whole thing? I'm going to do the entire thing. And then okay. And then you should see that your page numbers update now. Now there's something missing here. We went through the preliminary pages and we added all of those styles of our own, but none of them showed up here. When we said we wanted the table of contents from um, the template, all it does is automatically picks up the heading styles. If you want to include your own styles or another style that's not automatically included, you change your options before the table's put into place. If we, can, if we right click and update this, all we're gonna do is update it with the default settings. That's not what we want. So what we're gonna do now is insert a completely new table. I'm going to do a new table of contents, but I'm going to change my options before it's put into place. So for us here, can you go back to references, please? This is so that we get all the preliminary information in place. Can you go to table of contents? Custom table. 
And although we do want it to have headings one, two, and three from the template, that's good. I want to change my options because I would like to include thesis titles. So click on options and that shows you the table has been built from styles and outline levels if you've got them. And from here, I can see it's got heading one, two, and three applied. And if, if I scroll down that list, I should at one point come across thesis titles. Now what you have to do here is indicate the TOC level. What table of contents level do you want this to be played back at? So do I want it to be a, a TOC one, the same as my chapters? Or do I want it the next level down, a TOC two? Or a subsequent level down, a TOC three? I want mine to be the same as my chapter, so I'm gonna go for TOC one. So I type in the number one, and the little tick is now alongside thesis title. So it tells me when the table's put together, I will include that style. So I can click on OK and then confirm by clicking on OK again. And it says, do you want to replace this table of contents? By default, you'll only get one. So I'll say OK. And this time I have my table of contents with those numbers, uh, the Roman numerals rather in place for my preliminary information. And then I also have the main text of my thesis underneath. Little problem. I am looking at the table of contents. The table of contents is in my table of contents. Now the reason that it's done that is because we applied the style to it. So anything that has a style applied to it could be included in your information. And some people down here will say, I've got my image. My image has come into my table of contents. Why would that be? It's because that has got a style applied to it. If you've put um, heading two on your image, then that's gonna come in here as well. So you need to make sure it's normal so you don't get it. Now that's um, the area that we want here. And this is gonna be our workaround. So what we're gonna do here is say, that table of contents should look like everything else but not have the style applied to it. So we make this normal now, but we have to remember, if I go to the home tab, I have to remember this is Times New Roman 12, bold and italic. So at this point here, I'm gonna change it to normal, but then I'm gonna make it Times New Roman 12, bold and italic. And if I do that, right click, update the field, update the entire table, table of contents disappears. Because I don't need to see it in there, I'm actually looking at it right now, so um, you can actually, pinpoint what it is you want to include. Now, we've got to make some other changes as well. The other changes that we're going to make are just at the beginning of preliminary pages. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the document. Not interested in the first page for now. Abstract is fine. Declaration by author, we'll all be doing that. Publications is the next heading I've got. Publications during candidature. So from here, it says start the section on a new page. That's fine. But then if I don't have any, it's, you should never remove the heading but I can remove all that text and make sure that I say no publications. So that's all I need to have included for that information. So if I'm not publishing papers as I do my research, that's fine. Anything I have included in this thesis, well, nope, I've none there either. So then I can remove all of this and make sure I leave the statement, no publications included. So as long as you're aware of that, keep all of those headings in place, then you shouldn't have any issues with, with having that sent back. And all I want to do now is update that table of contents. So I'll do the entire table. And yes, some of those pages might now have adjusted a little bit. Okay, so the next thing that we want to work on then will be captions and objects in the actual document itself. So I'd like you to go into chapter one, Microsoft Word. Because we shuffle things around, things may or may not be in a different order, but I have got a little laptop here. So when you have images, photographs, diagrams, charts, tables, any of the, those objects in your actual thesis or complex document, you need to caption them in some way. That's not good enough. <laughs> That's definitely not good enough. And it's probably not what you'd want to include anyway. You want to automate this so that the numbering will be automatic as well. So I might use some of that. I'll just take laptops can be lit from either side but I don't want the whole caption. I'm just gonna get rid of that. Don't need that caption. And then I'm gonna select the object itself. Can you now go to the references tab, please? And on that references tab, this is where you can insert a caption. Now, at the moment, it will give me a caption of figure one. 
that's okay. If I go through my document, they will just count up. So I could have figure 74 in there. It's not brilliant because it doesn't guide anyone. So I could put the chapter numbering in there, the second 2.2 or 2.3. Um, so let's go to numbering and you can include chapter numbering there. Now, if you really want to, you can go beyond heading one. We're just saying I want to know what chapter it's in. And then you can choose to change the hyphen to um, a dot, um, a colon, an M dash, anything you want there. I'm just going to leave it as a dash. And then OK. So it's one dash one. And then I can type in what it actually is. Laptops can be lit from either side. And then when you click on OK, it adds that to your object. Now, I added a little bit extra on there just to let you see. It is just like ordinary text. I can go to it and I can edit it and I can delete it tidy it up, type something else, add more information in there. From here, I want to go and do the next object. I've got another image that I want to use. Now, mine's is a bit further down. I'll ignore the chart for now. Do you see that little image of fingers on keys? Can you click on that, do the same thing? Take out the caption and click on the object. Insert a caption. It automatically numbers, which is good. That's just fingers on keys. Confirm by saying OK. And that's been added as well. Now, there's a couple of other objects in here. One of them is a table. There we go. I've gone to chapter two for that one. If you click on that, you don't have to select the whole table. I'll just generally just sit inside the table. As long as the table's active, then it will work for you. Insert a caption here. This is a suite or suite applications. Now, I don't want that to be a figure. It's actually a table. So if I go to the label option here, I can change that to table. I've got table one, I'm gonna change my numbering. Go to numbering, include chapter numbering, and then I will say here that this is suite of applications. And then if you click on okay, you'll notice this one's a little bit different. It is in chapter two, it's the first table in chapter two, so two dash one's good, but it sits at the top. And I think there's a convention of tables at the top and figures at the foot. So I'm just gonna remove that caption, I no longer need that. There is one other object in there and it's a little chart. So I want to caption this. I've got a chart of timings. It could be duration or speed or something else, but um, I'll take that, get rid of the caption, click on the object, and then say I want to insert a caption. Now this is gonna be a chart. Now the problem here is there is no reference to a chart. So what you need to do is go to the button at the left to create a new label. You can call it whatever you like. This could be um, an illustration, a photo, a diagram, anything that's not on the list, you can add that in. So I'm going to say this is a chart. I'm going to switch on chapter numbering. And then I'm going to type in or enter whatever we had there, a chart of timings, and then confirm by saying OK. I want to guide my reader to these. I want them to know I've got so many objects or I've got so many tables. So can you go back to, now it's just above the Microsoft Word. There we go. We've got a list of figures and tables. I'm just going to put a page break in there. Control and enter on the keyboard will get you a page break. And then if I just press enter after a list of figures and tables. You won't get all these objects together. It will actually separate them out all my figures, all my charts, all my tables. So we're gonna start here with figures. If you now go up to the references tab on the ribbon, there's a little button that will say, insert a table of figures. If you click on it, is that what we're gonna get? Probably not. The most important piece of information in this little dialog box is here, the caption label. The last thing I inserted was a chart and that's what I've got there. So I don't want that. This is to be my figures. So can I get you to change that label to figure? The preview will change, and then if you just confirm by saying OK, it will automatically list the figures in your actual document. All right, I'm going to repeat that. I want tables. Go back up to exactly the same button, table of figures. Change your caption label to table. Confirm by saying OK, and I have a list of tables. I just pressed Enter a couple of times. And repeat that process for the last option, insert table of figures, and I want it to be a chart, and then OK. And you can see that you've now gathered, I'll just move this one onto a new page, you've now gathered a list of all of the objects that are currently part of your document. These are also like your table of contents, we can navigate. So if I want to go to my fingers on keys, control and click, it will take me to it. 
Now be very careful, it actually took you to that caption. You can separate these. Even though we clicked on that object before we added the caption to it, they're not locked together. They're separate objects, so they can be moved or separated. If someone has followed the link to this object, I wanna see it, how do they then get back to that list? If you have got um, access through your keyboard in the actual caption itself, if you alt left arrow, it will take you back to where you came from. It will follow that link so you can actually go back to where you came from. This time, I wanted to go to paragraph 2.2, please. I'm gonna move on from those caption labels but I want to make use of them by giving you a cross-reference within the document. So I want to add a cross-reference in here. In paragraph 2.2, or you may have moved it around, but it's Word cannot open writer documents. There's a little um, cross-reference in there, and it says, see figure one for an image of a person about to save a document. That's not brilliant. What I would like them to do is see figure one, or whatever figure it happens to be, with fingers on keys. So I'm gonna take that out and leave a little space. So in here, if I'm gonna do a cross-reference, we're still on the References tab. I want to insert a cross-reference. Now there are three parts to this. So the first thing is, it says, well, what do you want type of reference do you want? It defaults to numbered item. We've got styles in there, so they've all been numbered. I don't want that, I would like a figure. So you can scroll down the list. You can see all the different components of your document that you can refer to, but I want figures. Now I'm also gonna do fingers on keys. So if I have fingers on keys there, that's first part is what I'm getting. The second part is the one that I want to use. The third part is what do I wanna play back in the document? I'm gonna use the entire caption, but you can break that down if you wanted to just have a little reference to it. So I'm gonna go for the entire caption and click on insert. And what you should see now at the top of the screen is you've now got a little reference to Figure 1.2, fingers on keys. Now I wanna do more than that. I wanna give them some direction. I didn't see where it was before, so I wanna see where it is now. Is it above or is it below? What page is it on? Well, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm um, sorry, not that one there. I'm gonna go into the document. I'm just gonna put a little space so that I can get the next part of my cross-reference in there. You'll notice the cross-reference dialog box did not disappear. Word kind of knows that you'll, you'll do this in stages. So the next stage is, it's still a figure, it's still fingers on keys, but this time I'm gonna play back a page number. So if I select page number, the option underneath, include above or below, becomes act, um, active. I'm gonna put a little tick in there. And if it's on the same page, it will say above or below. And if it's on a different page, it will say on page whatever. So I'm gonna do that now and click on insert. And what you should see is that it says, mine in this case said on page four. I can close down that cross-reference now. Now, as I'm reading this document and I come across the cross-reference, it might be, please see my data. That will also allow you to navigate. If you click on any one of these, you'll see the little field codes. I can go to that part in the document. If I hold down control and click, it then takes me to that object. Alt left arrow will take me back into the text to read or continue reading from where I left off. Now this is often where the question comes up, what if I move it? So let's do that. Let's go to it now. So I'm gonna move this. Now you have to be careful. I said before it could be separated. So in the margin, I'm gonna click and drag down and it should allow me to select both the image and the caption underneath. And what I want to do is make sure you cut them out of there. Don't copy them because it will still refer to that first instance. So if I cut that out of there, I'm doing control and X, everything's moved up. I'm gonna to go to the end at 2.4 and just make sure that I'm above the section break and then I'm gonna paste it into place. Little alarm bell should be ringing now because it was in chapter one, it was 1.2 and I've moved it into chapter two. That number hasn't updated. It won't automatically do that, but you can update your table. Now we've got lots to change here. When we pulled that out, everything's shifted up. Everything's moved around. You don't have to remember where all the codes in your document are. You need to know they're there, and then you need to know what point to update. 
So if I want to update this, I need to make sure that's correct. I need to make sure the table of contents is correct. My table of figures is moved. My cross-reference is different. I want to update the whole document now. So if you're going to do that, just select the whole document. You can do Control and A for Apple. Or you can do three clicks in the margin. This will test your mouse technique, but three clicks here. There we go. Three clicks will also do the whole document. Now, if I want to update all the codes in my document, you go to the function keys along the top of your keyboard, function key F9. And if you do F9, it will run through the document and it will give you those updates. Now, the first thing I've got here is a problem and it's the chart. You know the little chart we've got in there? It's connected to an Excel spreadsheet, which we don't have. So it tells you oh, there's a link that's not available. That's fine. We'll just okay that. And then it says your table of contents. Do you want to update the entire table? Yes, I do. And then okay. And then, oh, table of figures. Do I want to update those? Yes, I do. Update the entire table. And then it comes back again. But remember, we did figures, tables, and charts. So for every label that you've got an object in there, you'll get one of these to update. And then it looks like the documents come back to you. There it now says that's figure 2.1. There's a little bit of a problem with it. Because the document starts updating from the top all the way down. So what it does here, it says, oh, here's the table of contents, or here's your table of figures. Oh, figure 1.2 is now on page 12. Oh, that's fine. And all the way, it goes all the way down. And then it says 1.2 is actually 2.1. So when you go to update your document, do it twice. So just hit F9 again. In fact, the first time when I <laughs> update the entire table, you didn't need to do that first time round. You do need to do it second time round, though. So always do it twice, only because it starts at the top of the document and works its way down. So your table of figures and your table of contents should now be correct. So if you want to check it, let's go to paragraph 2.2. .2. So it no longer says figure 1.2, fingers on keys on page 4. It now should say figure 2.1, fingers on keys on page whatever. The next thing I want to do here is just a final consolidation. So we had preliminary pages and we pulled in chapters one and two. There's an odd chapter out there. We've got chapter three that still needs to come in as well. Now, you don't have to go to it, but I'm just going to show you it. And if I open up thesis chapter three, starts on chapter one because there's nothing before it. But it's got red text. It's got blue text. It's got images. They have been captioned. I think the font here is Calibra. So this is what the document chapter three will look like. Before I go to do anything, to separate my chapters, section breaks. Now, I've got one there, but that's separating your bibliography. So can I get you now to go to virtually the end of chapter two, go to layout, go to breaks, and add in a next page section break. It needs to be at the end of chapter two, so un underneath that little image. So we're on a new page. This is where chapter three should go. I want to insert chapter three as an object. I don't want to copy and paste it. So I'm going to go to insert text from file. It's come in and it looks the same as everything else. This is a peculiar thing. It's got the wrong numbers. And I'll just give you a disclaimer. So we're currently looking at chapter one, chapter two, chapter one. <laughs> this is odd because most of what we can do here works for the PC and not the Mac. If you do right click and continue numbering, that doesn't work here, but it does work on a Mac, funnily enough. So what we're gonna do is pick up everything that's a heading one. So chapter one, chapter two, chapter one. To do that, can you go to the home tab on the ribbon? And where we've got heading one there, do you see heading one has got the outline on the ribbon? Right click on it. So if I do select all, selected them all now, the way to fix it, reapply the style. One click on the style. Done. Did that work? Okay. Now, sometimes it will do it for the heading ones, but it doesn't filter down to heading two. So what you have to do is go to the, do the same thing. And this, ours worked, that's fine. We don't have to do it. But if it hasn't worked, you would then go to the next level heading, right click on it, and select all instances. And this one tells us there are 13 heading twos here. So I would then select them to pick them up, and then I would do one click to reapply, and it would automatically apply that. All good? So if you do come across that my numbering's not automatically updating, then you just select the heading styles and you reapply the heading styles. This is where we need to update everything now. 
because we've got 1.6 and whatnot in our um, table of contents, but it should be 1.7. So select everything and then F9. You can just go through the whole thing first time round. And then when it comes back to you and you do it again, this is where you need to update the entire tables. And then if you want to check it, you can go in just above Microsoft Word. You can go and have a look at that table of contents and you'll see that it includes chapter three. And the last thing to do with that is just to save. So if you click on that little disc, thank you so much for coming. I hope it was of some use. Um, tips and tricks are always helpful and we might have just reinforced what you already knew. If you've got any other questions, don't hesitate to come back to us.